Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back in my cider shed with some more cider to try. And I'm whispering because my neighbours are having a party in their garden, a dinner party with guests. And probably what they don't need is, a, is some northern bloke in a shed shouting about cider, putting a damper on things, spoiling the mood. That's not my jam. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep it down <coughs> for a bit. And I'll probably get more vol uh, voluble as things go. As they already have. Anyway, it's another one from Andrew Greenough. Greenough? I spoke to him the day on the phone. He, sp he called me up. I hadn't called him. There was no email, nothing like that. I couldn't get in touch with him. Um, there was a phone number that he uh, left on, in my inbox. I didn't get, it, was, it was half term. I was busy. And then I forgot. Anyway, he called me, which is great. So I got to talk to him. Uh, about the cider he sent me to say thank you for starters and also to chat about cider in general and it's a really nice conversation it's very interesting I'd love to visit him at some point he's in the middle of nowhere in Wales on a mountain basically so it might be difficult but one day Andrew I'll try and make it happen anyway it's the third of the three ciders he sent and it's this one it is the Somerset Apples Yarnton Mill Somerset Red Streak and A.N. Other now um, Yarn to Mill, as I told Andrew on the phone, is one of my favourite cider apples by some margin, I think. I love it. Someone said Red Streak, classic cider apple, and eh, another, never had that one. So let's try it. Anyway, basically, he told me all about it, but in the letter he sent me, there's also some blurb. So I'm going to read it out because it, it summarises what he said. There are three bottles for you to try. The first one is a cider I made years ago. No day on it and which I didn't like and abandoned at the back of a shed. Welcome to my world. My intention was to pour it away and reuse the bottles, but never actually got around to it. A friend came up to cut some logs and asked if he could try it. What amazed me was that he came back and asked for more, and then asked for even more to take on holiday with his friends, cider drinkers from Bristol. Anyway, see what you think. Uh, Somerset organic apples from a band and orchard. There were Somerset Red Street Yellow Mill and a third unidentified variety. Natural yeast, no sugar, etc. Oh, sorry, I missed a bit out. They apparently liked it too, so I thought I'd better try it. I thought it was okay, but a bit dry for me. So Andrew likes a bit of residual sugar. I don't have a problem with that. I like the sugar as well. I like it very much indeed. But I also like dry cider. You know, if it's good, it's good. That's end of discussion. Right, so let's take off this lovely label. These labels, I've been liking very much. I'm hanging them up in my shed over here. Uh, so if I can get it off without knackering the string. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, nearly there. Boom. I'm going to hang you up with the others, my friend. There you go. Right, so. He also apologised because he hadn't cleaned the bottles, so they're a bit dirty, because he had a lot of them. And he's a busy man, you know, he's got a farm on a hill in Wales, he's got stuff to do. Um, I said it didn't bother me at all. I kind of like dirty bottles. In fact, if you saw a very expensive bottle of Burgundy covered in dust, you wouldn't go, ooh, they haven't cleaned it. you go, that's probably worth a lot, because it's covered in dust. It's obviously very old and special. Anyway, let's open it and see what happens. I don't know if this is sparkling or not, actually. Let's find out. It is still no problem. Cider salon glass. We like the cider. So let's pour it out. Have a look. So it is hazy. So the flavour he said he had in it. So we had a conversation about off flavours, about mouse and stuff. And uh, also uh, some. Uh, so I didn't think I could detect mouse. And now I think I can due to a, a tasting I did of Thorn Perry from Buffalo Organics, two different tastings. I'll put the, the numbers on the screen so you know which tastings they were. But he said, no, it wasn't that. He said it was like a chemical flavour, like a, like a chemical. He couldn't identify identify exactly, but it was like a chemical flavour. So it was like a clean flavor. It doesn't add anything to this. Anyway, whatever. So, oh, let's do it properly. Mouldy thingamajig. There you go. There you go. Nice. Just a delicate amber, a hint of amber in that. It's not super amber, but it's definitely amber and it's hazy, as one would expect. Uh, let's smell it. I think I've overfilled this glass, so I may well spill more cider. Okay, oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. So what is that? So there is a smell in there. 
The thing about mouse is you can't smell mouse. It's something you can, well, some people claim they can, but it's something you don't necessarily detect with your nose, but with your palate. So, so it's not that, but there is something in there. What is that smell? That was necessarily chemical. Not sure. Not sure. I'm going to get back to you on that. I'm going to live with it for an hour or so after I finish this film and then post some notes on the screen, I think. Anyway, let's taste. And there's definitely definite apple character in there, but... Hint of tannin, which one would expect from down to mill. There's subtle apple flavour. It's quite a, there's, there's a hint of... Well, it's not really malic. I don't know if it's gone through, um, um, oh God, malolactic fermentation. But it feels more like a lactic acid to me than a malic acid. So let's just say yeah to that. Um, I think there is a flavour in this though. Which is slightly unusual and it's not a typical... Um, sorry, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I can't talk and think. Give me a sec. Hint of a prickle, delicate acidity, delicate appleness, appleness, that's a new word, but boom, there you go, appleness. Hint of like apple skin, but I think there is something else going on in here. And it smells like, it's making me think of like petroleum, that's what it's making me think of. Like a petrol thing. And not like a new Wellington boot smell. Not the sort of thing you would get in like a, a really great Riesling from Austria or Germany or something like that. It's not a new Wellington boot. And I know that smell. Cheesemonger, 20 odd years. Lots of Wellington boots. Lots of new ones. I love the smell of a new Wellington boot. And I love that smell in wines and so forth. But that, to me, smells more like the forecourt of a petrol station. So I don't know how powerful that aromatic was before Andrew. It may have diminished a bit, but I think it's still there. I think it's still there for me, and it's pretty obvious. So yeah, it smells now all I can think of is the forecourt of a petrol station. That's it. That's it. And it's not I don't hate that smell, but it's a very odd smell to get inside of. And it is a fault, and I think Andrew's original judgment was correct. So that is actually is a tick. You know, that's a tick. That means he smelt something, he wasn't sure about it, and he's like, that's not how I want it to be. And I think I'm getting it as well. I think I'm getting it as well. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with that because it's a learning curve. Andrew has planted a load of trees on a farm in Wales. He's figuring things out as he goes. It's a hobby. He's not sure if he even wants to do it professionally. It's just a hobby, but by God, he's he's putting a lot of work in for something that's just a hobby when you've got like a thousand bottles of cider sitting around of a vintage, you know, in a shed. Then crikey, you know, that's um, that's commitment to a hobby and so. But I agree with you, Andrew. I think you made the right decision. I think that smells like a petrol station forecourt. And I'm not sure people want to have that when they drink their cider. And I have to say, I don't recall ever having that in a cider before. And I wonder what's caused it. It's very unusual. Very unusual. Anyway, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve. So highs and lows. But you know what? This is something he just sent me because, well, he had it and he didn't like it. So he thought, well, let's give it a shot. And quite right too. And also, he entered a load of cider into the bathroom of shore. DPD smashed all of the bottles on the way there. Bad DBD. Bad DBD. Take more care of your packaging, because I'm sure, based on the other stuff that I've tried, I think it'd have done all right. I think it'd have done all right. Anyway, thank you for joining me back in my cider shed. I hope you join me again, but until that time, cheers.